Ladies and gentlemen, friends, uh, visitors, well-wishers, good afternoon. I want to first of all thank the council for inviting me to this ceremony and to share with you uh, very short remarks. There are internal matters I am sure that we will discuss at another time and I do not want to uh, detain our guests for too long uh, at the ceremony. But I want to first of all commend and congratulate the new council for taking up the challenge of leading this community for the next three years. All of you will know that leadership is a very difficult um, job to have because everything that will go wrong in the village, they will blame you. Um, and usually they will say that you're doing nothing. Um, but you'll always see that the, your own achievements here is always clear for everybody to see. Because I really want to commend the council for the extent of the involvement in the community. Uh, in terms of keeping the village clean and beautiful has been at the center of the council's activities. And all of you who have driven into Vekas, you will see how clean we have kept this village and that's how we intend to keep it for the foreseeable future. But importantly too, the council has been involved in the school, in the education of our children. Because oftentimes you hear councils speak about roads and drains and so forth. But here in Vekas, they have focused their attention a lot on the human aspect of development. People, whether it is the elderly, whether it is school children, whether it is the health of more people. Health talks and about healthy lifestyles and eating practices, uh, taking our, 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 our pressure and all these things and so forth. The council have been involved in these things. So I really want to commend you and to say to you, I would like for you to continue on that, on that um, trajectory because it is important for us to appreciate the fact that we as a community must play our part in the education and upbringing of our children. Yes, it is a parental responsibility, but it's also a societal responsibility. I want to say that there are a number of things that we will do together going forward, one of which is the total eradication of pit latrines in Vekas, and you have sent me the list of people who still have pit latrines in Vekas, and that will be um, done. We have to complete the Balizier Road, and not under Kudme, we have to do it and do it once and for all, rather than take 10 more years to do it. We have to do it, and let's do it um, before your term ends. And also the Bellevue Road, we started, we did some work there, but we have to com complete it. So I would like your partnership in that regard. I know the council has concerns about the resource center. We have spoken about this for some time. But you know, in these things, uh, sometimes priorities change because of circumstances have changed. And I had to make a decision as to whether I leave the Penville to Vegas Road in a dilapidated condition or build a resource center. The answer to that question is, is simple. We needed the road, and therefore priority had to be given to the road, which is costing the government $5 million. That is on top of the $3 million which we spent on the Vegas Penville Water Project. We have a serious water problem in Vegas, and to address it will cost the Treasury of Dominica $1.3 million. I could have built a resource center and have some change left, or do I do the water project? Water is important to all of us, and the reliability of the supply is also important. So we have to do this. You recognize that we just spent some money building a retaining wall in a very dangerous part of, of Thibault. At floor. We have to fix the road now. That's going to also going to cost us some money. The Ministry of Health was about to commence uh, repair works on the health center. And when I saw the amount that they had to spend and knowing the condition of the health center, knowing the age of the health center, the government felt that it is money that would not be well spent. We should move towards the building of a new health center. And the Ministry of Health has been given instructions to prepare the designs for this health center. Um, for us to build because we need a proper facility to provide healthcare services to our residents. So these things will be done, and of course, the health center will certainly be done in your term. And, and of course, we can hope that the resource center can be done. But we have a school that is used only 8 to 1 in, 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 in a week, and it, it is not used in the weekend, so we can use the 
to double up as a resource center when we need a facility. It is clean, it is beautiful, and here we are making use of it today. So sometimes priorities, and running the country is no different from managing your families. Your children ask you for things, you may tell them yes, but one of their children's arm got broken, and you have to take her to the hospital, and you may have to use that money to take her to the doctor. You may want a new motor car, but come a storm, it damage everything in your home, damage your roof, you have to decide whether you want to wet at night, or whether you need to drive a new motor car so your neighbor, neighbor can see you with a new motor car. And you take a decision, you take a decision to fix your home, and drive your kujalopi until you can make things better. So it's no different from running the country. The government doesn't have a large estate, and the only problem we have is that we do not know what to do with the money. And when people talk about, oh, my tax money, I can tell you, my dear friends, that your tax money is not enough to run the country. And this is why the government has had to go out to negotiate resources on your behalf to implement a number of things taking place in Dominica. So when you hear people on the radio saying, oh, my tax money, my VAT money, when you add all your VAT money and all your tax money, it is not enough to run the country. It is not enough to provide the services that we have to provide to the citizens of Dominica. Because now we are providing the pickup of your garbage in every part of Dominica. And sometimes when I drive across Dominica and I see people have all sorts of garbage outside, I'm saying, but I know these places, they have big yards at the back. They could build, dig a hole and manage the garbage. Everything we want to send to a place called Labas in Rosa. Whether it's dash and peel, whether it's a branch we cut in our backyard, everything we want to send. There is something called management of your waste. And if we manage it, it, it places less pressure on the government to provide this service for you. We provide you, everybody who is 60 years and older, everybody 18 years and younger, with free medical care. You, the beneficiary, get it free of charge. But the government must pay to provide to you free of charge. So it is not that we're getting the medicine free. It is not that we're not, we're not paying the doctors. It is not that we have, we don't have to run the CD scan, and we just bought a new CD scan and a mammogram and all sorts of other medical equipment. And we're getting a whole host of medical equipment from the United Arab Emirates that will come to Dominica in the next few days and distribute it to every health center across Dominica. The Ministry of Health will give a complete list of this in the days ahead. Housing, the amount of money that we spent in housing, you know, this costs a lot of money. So we have to appreciate those things. The transportation of our students to uh, secondary school. It is now almost a national program. Where students from the north in Capuchin and Penville and our areas here, in Marigot, Calibishi, uh, Benz, uh, the Salisbury, Collio, Jubla, Fidit Savan, uh, Belvis Chopin, all of these communities. We provide transportation to our students to the secondary schools, paid for by the government. Daily, in Dailies, for example, students, the parents paid $130 per child to Rosa. And I knew of a family that had three children going to secondary school in Rosa. Now you can understand the burden on that parent. The government came in some years ago and decided that we shall provide free transportation to the parents. So that's $390 every month that we're allowing the parents to keep in their pockets to help them to pay the light bills, to pay the water, and to buy food. All of this is an effort to educate new people. And when we look at Vegas, for example, those of us who want to have a flashback of 2000, when I became your humble servant, to take a drive from the police station to the school was a nightmare. To come from Blenheim to Vickers was a disaster, a heartache. People who had to go from Vickers to Penville would rather not have to go there at all. Every single road in Vickers and its constituency was in a bad 
very bad state. And today, we all drive on better roads in this constituency, in this village, because of us being in office. When I came in, 32% of our high school student, primary school students had access to secondary school. 32%. In less than seven years as your file rep, 100% of them ended up having access to secondary school. When I became a power rep, when I was a student at the, at the college, when I was a lecturer at the college, and when I was a student at the college in 1990 to 1992, I was the only one from the entire constituency in the college. And today, the students who do not want to go to college is because they do not want to go to college in this constituency. And I am saying to the parents that we have to ensure that education continues to be at the center of our family life. Because that's the way, that's where and how our children are going to help transform themselves. But they must not be complacent. And we as parents must not be complacent at all. It is not because everybody has a space, we must be free up. It means, therefore, we have to even work harder to ensure that our students can get the best grades that are available. At university, we have had several of our young people going to university. My hope and prayer is that those who have gone should come back to the village and help build the village. I cannot be one of very few of us who have come back to the village to help build the village. All of us must come back to build the village. But I want to make a point there on what I heard on the news, and I read the transcript of what Thompson Fountain said in the United States. And he said that he and the Workers' Party went to a village in Dominica. And the young people are asking them for guns. For guns to kill Chinese and Haitians. Now, I can tell you, my friends, that I have been a member of parliament for 14 years this year. And I've been the leader of the Labour Party for 10 years this year. And never, and I have been around Dominica more than most in this country. And I've been to more homes in Dominica than most in this country. And I've been to every single village and cranny in Dominica, every one of them. And never have our young people asked me for guns to kill anybody. <laughs> Somebody is not going to ask you for a marijuana if they know that you're not smoking marijuana. They're not going to ask you for a matches if they know that you're not a smoker. They will ask you for guns because of what you are preaching to our people in Dominica. And if anybody in this country is not standing up in condemnation of these things, the blood of our youth and the future of our country will be on your hands. And I'm not here to talk about politics because the president is here. I don't talk about politics in the presence of the president. And in the presence of my church leader. I'm a Catholic, I do not. And for me, it's not about politics. It is about something that talks about leadership, what you say to people, what you say to your, to, your, to your children, and what you say to the country and the world. You see, and they go to these places hoping that nobody will record them and, 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 and repeat what they've said. And so they would say it, and the people there not knowing would believe. But how could you want to be leaders in this country? and promoting that falsehood about our people. And you hear them preaching violence. We have to respect people. Not everybody can support me, I respect that. But I'm not gonna tell anybody to kill you because you don't support me. And it is because these people are preaching a sermon of hate, of violence, 
that a man could think that he could approach you, a big man, to ask you for a gun to kill somebody. Because you're accepting money from them, from the drug dealers to campaign. We will never in this government, in the lower party, accept any money from any drug person to run company in Dominica. I will say to you, I will say to you publicly, I rather not be in government than to take money from any drug dealer to run campaign in Dominica. Because how could you really go and say this? What image are you trying to paint of our country? A country that we all have worked so hard to build and to promote as a peaceful place to come and do business, as a peaceful place to come to visit. But we shall not be deterred by these things. It tells us as a people that we have to be more vigilant, we have to be more aware, and the choices and decisions which we make are going to be even more critical. Because if these people are not in government, and I can tell you, based on the Constitution, a prime minister has a lot of authority. But it has to be used wisely, prudently, and in a responsible manner. Because if you do not do so, you can create havoc in the country. And this government, this government is not hostage to anybody in this world or this country. To anybody in this world and this country. Because we shall never compromise this country in any way, shape or form. But I want to finally say to the council, I commend you and I want to also recognize my friends like L. George and family and May Honore and family and Vianney and family. Those of you who drove down the hill would see the beautiful flowers planted along the roadside. These are done by these families and they maintain it themselves, saving the government several thousands of dollars every year. And what a beautiful country we would have. It's all families who to join forces and do the same in our respective communities. You know. So, and I will say with great humility, I try my little thing on the roadside too. But the council don't, they don't, they don't um, clean in front of my house. I don't know why. So. Though I put my house straight up front for the year. I see the clock, the clock is smiling, so she might fix that up. And so. But we shall meet very soon to go over your activities. I see we have teacher Charlotte there who is a real community person and a champion for ecotourism. And OPAC and, and O2, clearly there are opportunities there. Um, Swallow, who is a regional councillor, he is on all international organizations of councillors. Um, and I will tell you, who is highly regarded Highly regarded by the International Regional Organization of Councillors. <laughs> Highly regarded. We have Brian there who is the leading sportsman in the village and the one who continues to maintain the playing, playing field at no cost to the council or to the government. <laughs> we have our friend there who maintains the water supply and if he sees you running your horse too much, he'll come and tell you, look, you need to turn off your pipe because the water level is a bit low and so on and so forth. <laughs> Including me, he tells me that too, you know, so he's, he's, he's a straightforward person and so forth. So respect of who you are, he'll tell you so. We have George who has been in the council before, who took a break. Uh, George is the, the, is the son of our former power rep, Honorable Alexis Williams, and of course, the Shallow too, who served for so many years as a councillor and, 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 a, and a member of parliament. And, we have um, Agatha, who has been with us for some time on the council. It must be a fourth term, Agatha. A long time, responsible for quota. But, and of course, we have nurse, a retired nurse and so forth, who spends more time out of her home rather than in her home in community activities. 
you know, um, involved in it. But for me, it is a great pleasure to see Mr. Grano on the council. Great, you know, very quiet person, but very committed to the community. And I will tell you, you, you I, we will work together to make you the best councillor Amber has ever seen. But we very happy to have you. So you have a, you have a very good council, who I'm sure will work very well together. It is left to us now, the villagers, to join hands with them and move this community even to greater heights. I thank you very much for listening to me. God bless you. God bless Dominica. Thank you. On behalf of the council, I want to thank the Prime Minister and Paul Rep for his report. Thank you, sir. Let us give him another round of applause.